Hey everyone, it's Allison from the DNA Learning Center here with another DNA LC short. Have you ever wondered how it is that all of the cells in your body have the same DNA, so the same set of instructions, but yet different types of cells can do different things? Let's talk about that. Different cells with the same DNA can use that DNA or follow the instructions coded in that DNA in different ways thanks to something we study in the field of epigenetics. Epi refers to something being over or around, and genetics refers to DNA or genes. So epigenetics is the study of factors that occur sort of on top of DNA. These are not mutations, which are changes to the DNA itself, but changes that affect how that DNA is used. There are a variety of epigenetic marks, and today I'm just going to discuss one of them, DNA methylation. DNA methylation refers to the addition of a methyl group to DNA. A methyl group is one carbon atom, which is the C here, bonded to three hydrogen atoms, which are the Hs. These methyl groups get added onto cytosine most often, which is also abbreviated C in DNA, but this is different than the C for carbon. This occurs at the five prime position in the cytosine, so if we count the atoms in the ring from here in a counterclockwise direction, one, two, three, four, five, the methyl group gets added on to make 5-methylcytosine, which looks like this. In mammals, including humans, this mostly happens in the context of a CG dinucleotide, sometimes written as CPG. That just means a cytosine in the DNA followed by a guanine, G. The P in CPG stands for phosphate, which refers to this phosphate group in the backbone of the DNA in between the C and its neighboring G. In plants and some other organisms, the pattern is a little bit different, and adenine A can also be methylated, but that isn't as common and isn't as well studied. Okay, so what does this little group of atoms being added onto a cytosine have to do with how our cells can follow instructions encoded in DNA differently? Well, DNA methylation, along with other epigenetic marks, has an impact on gene expression. Epigenetic marks impact which part of your DNA gets transcribed into RNA and translated into protein. And proteins are usually what actually carry out the functions of a cell. So this is my depiction of a promoter, which is a region of DNA just before a gene where proteins bind to initiate transcription of this gene. Promoters often contain lots of CPGs. In fact, in humans, about 70% of proximal promoters, so promoters that are right next to the start of a gene, contain what are called CPG islands. CPG islands are stretches of DNA that have more CPGs than are expected. DNA methylation that occurs in promoters usually stops that gene from being expressed. This is at least partly because the methylation physically blocks the proteins required for transcription from getting to the promoter and the gene. Okay, so back to our different cells doing different jobs. Beta cells in your pancreas, for example, need to make insulin. So the promoter for the insulin gene is unmethylated and the DNA gets transcribed into RNA, the RNA gets translated into protein and your cells secrete insulin. But in your other cells, say your blood cells or your brain cells, they don't make insulin. That's not part of their job so the insulin promoter in these cells is methylated and the gene doesn't get transcribed. This is important so that each type of cell can conserve its energy for the job it actually has to do. DNA methylation gone wrong can lead to diseases like cancer in humans and other animals and can affect things like how early plants start flowering. I hope you've enjoyed this quick introduction to DNA methylation. Let us know in the comments if you have any questions or if you have suggestions for future DNA LC short content. Be sure to check out our other videos and hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. Bye!